Hello, this is Sigrid Anderson from KF Anderson Leadership Academy. Hello. Hi, Jens. A booking. Ah, I love bookings. Thank you very much for that. I have a problem right now. Can I call you back in 15 minutes, please? Yes. Thank you, Jens. Sir. I, yes, I have your phone number. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. I call you in 15 minutes. Thank you. Bye. KF Anderson Leadership Academy. Wisdom in leadership. Let me tell you two things. First of all, how it all started, uh, why I named it uh, after my father's name, and the concept behind that here, because there's a concept behind it. First of all, um, I named the company my father's name because I want to honor my parents, both my father and my mom. My father, for uh, striving uh, for really many years, make sure to get food on the table every day and a roof over our head. We were five kids. The task for my mom was to raise five kids. She was a home worker. Um, she had an ambition to make the next generation better than the generation she belonged to. She was growing up during the Second World War. And she did. What, she, what he did was one thing. He learned when to work. There was no end to how much we had to work to make sure that we get things right. The other thing was what my mom taught me. That was maybe even more extraordinary. She installed in all our five kids, all us, all five kids, the mindset of a seeker, seeking and seeking for what we call a bright, great learning experiences and to expand our life as much as we can as we could in that direction. That was that was her. Without these two parents, I would never sit here in front of this camera and you were listening to me. I would have been somewhere else. There's no doubt that this is true. So this is the reason why I actually called the, the company in my parents' names and my father. Kai Fritjof Anderson was his name. When we go through the wisdom and leadership and leadership at all, I would like to tell you a few, four stories. I do it very short. First of all, when I went out of school, 15 years old, the teacher that I had been next to for five years, the last five years in the elementary school, he made a speech for us. That was in the end of March 1958. What he told me upon there, uh, in that situation, I got a shock because he said the following. Now I have taught you everything I know all about. When I heard that, I knew that I had learned to less. This was absolutely not good enough. Because I had much greater ambition. I learned that from my mom to expand my life for great and <laughs> great experiences and try to learn as much as I could. And this was not good enough. So he actually taught me a couple of things doing this. I would like to be a radio and television set mechanics. That was not good enough for that. I asked my dad, what can I do? Uh, can you please help me uh, to get a trainee job in that? And he said to me, yes, I certainly can. And you know, maybe you had a father like me. Uh, a year later, nothing had happened. I couldn't deal with that. So I said to myself, what should I do, right? And then I figured out one thing. I had to have two helpers. Helper here, helper there. That means we were free. And from that very point, I took the lead in my life. And whatever happened, I tried to strive in the spirit of my mom to make great life experiences, as many as I could, and expand it as much as I can, and I could. And what I did, I learned one thing, that was to take the lead. Whatever happens around me, I always took the lead. Helper number one, helper number two. And it doesn't turn that way, because I'm not a pusher. I'm a seeker. I take it into me and take any adversity as an opportunity to come up with a good solution. That was a very profound thing. The next thing that was very significant for me was when I went into the army. I was in the engineering troop. 19 years old, I was called in to make my service in the army. Been there for a month, I was called into my colonel. My colonel, uh, Gerda was his name, he told me the following, we want you to be an officer. I said to him, uh, officer, no, you, a sergeant, you start being a sergeant, he told me. A sergeant? I said, yes. 
Okay, so how do we do that? We'll tell you. The only thing you had to do is to sign the paper, and then 12 months later, I was actually a sergeant, and I was responsible for eight people's life. If we ever came to war, I was responsible for eight people's life. That was absolutely outstanding. I reminded my mom, she had experienced the Second World War. The only thing I can say, this has to be done right. What we did. I was there for two years. I had one officer that was absolutely significant to anyone else in that, in that engineering company. His name was Kai Nelson. He was what I call a great leader. And here comes the first concept. A great leader, what is that? A great leader is uh, someone who sees things that other people don't see. So he taught me the following. He said to me, S.W. Anderson, when you talk to this man over there, you talk to him in a, spe in a special way so you make sure that he understands what you try to ask him to do and do it the way that you want it in the quality and the safety uh, when he did it. And when you then turn over here and talk to this guy over here and ask him to do the same thing, you have to make the transformation because they're two different people. That means when you communicate to him with a different background than this guy over there, then you have to communicate in a different way. So that you make sure that this guy over there, he come up with the same results and the same outcome in his work as this man over there. That was a very heavy learning point for me. So he saw things that I couldn't see. I call, today I call this a higher conscious level. He was more alert than I was, and for that reason he could observe. I didn't so. But I learned that from him. He was a great, he was a great leader. They also want me to be an officer, but I refused to do that because after a couple of months, Kai Nielsen, working together with him for, for, for several months, they suddenly they took him to the headquarter and he disappeared. And he was incomparable to anyone else in the military I ever met after that. That was very significant. A great leader sees things that other people don't see and communicate in a way so each and everyone understands what he wants. That was amazing. After that, the army, right after that, I got a job in a company called Japan Telephone Company. Here I was responsible for 300 people's work. Being there for nine years, I ended up with having three pe 300 people's work and being responsible for that. Remark my expression. All of them were adults. Many of them have been in school more than 10 years. So I don't make myself responsible for them in their life. I, I mean, they were not soldiers. They were workers. So I was only responsible for that they did the work. Not for them. They could take care of themselves. Working there for <clears throat> nine years with that, one day I got a phone call from the CEO of Jotland Telephone Company. Jotland Telephone Company <clears throat> uh, <coughs> CEO, Richard was his name, Ralste. Richard Ralste, he called me up and, <laughs> and said to me over the phone, I definitely didn't know, knew who he was. But I was a little bit surprised when he, when he said to me, Siegfried, I want you to come over to me and my staff and help me making a better company. I, uh, I said to him, but you read right out of my mouth without thinking about that he was my CEO. You already gave me the best job I can get uh, here in this company. I'm a really uh, big fan of what I'm doing here for you in this company. Yes, he said, but I still want you to go to me. Then, right out of my mouth, right from my brain, I said to him, but why should I be led by you? And he answered right away and said, that's very easy. I want Captain Telephone Company to be placed on the world map of telephone companies, and you have to help me doing this. And I said, what a purpose. That, I, I'm coming, no problem. So I clicked jumped over there. I learned another thing here. I learned that he, this great leader, Richard Ralston, he had a purpose that was very important to him. I also <clears throat> learned another thing. He was definitely a great human being. Every time I saw him, I reminded my mother's words. Remember to be a great human being. He was one of them. Kai Nielsen from the army, he was a great leader. Richard Nielsen was both a great leader and a very good 
human being. I worked for him for three years. Unfortunately then, he got, went on retirement. I jumped out as well because I don't want to experience anyone else after him inside that company. The next learning experience I had was when I started up myself in 1986. A couple of years later, in 1993, I had a training. I started up a train company. I had a training in Beijing, and there I met a man. His name was, and I have his business card here, Sheng Yves Sheng. He was a manager from Mursk in Beijing. When I gave him the question, yeah, here I turned so I can see his Chinese name. He was a logistic manager from Mursk in Beijing. When I gave him the question, as I used to do upon that time when I started my leadership training, was why should I be led by you? Many people can't answer that question. Many people say, ah, come on, uh, can I answer that question for tomorrow? It was a very interesting question. I say, if you, can't, if you can't reply that question right away, it becomes ridiculous. This guy, Xi Wen he could tell me right away why I should be led by him. He said the following. I am working on a topic, a purpose called wisdom and leadership. If you work together with me and work for me, I'm not there yet, but I'm striving to reach that level of leadership that I call wisdom in leadership. If you join me, I can help you with that. I was blown away. I said to myself, this is a very beautiful purpose for my training company, wisdom in leadership. That means to take the practice of leadership up to what I call an elite level, both management and leadership up to an elite level, the quality and boost that quality as much as I could. That is what this is all about. Unfortunately, two years later, he got a diagnosis that none of us would like to listen to. That was a very, very sad story. It took a half year, he passed away. I said to myself, I'll make sure that in his name and in his honor, I will work on wisdom and leadership for the rest of my days. And that is what I'm doing. So, here you see it, the wisdom and leadership, that's exactly what we're doing. I have worked on that since the mid 1990s. I'm very far into it. There's still a long way to go. I think I have still 30 years more experiences, learning experiences, to make sure I have the concept right. But wisdom and leadership is built up upon a few guidelines. I call them guidelines for the, because each and every one of us are different. I learned that from Kai Nielsen, remember that. So you have your own way to reach that level, the elite level practice of leadership. If you're a manager, the elite practice of management in your own way. For that reason, every one of us, but if we are striving at the same purpose, one day we will meet at that purpose. So each and every one of you, when we teach you that, the guidelines to do this, the attitude to do it, the behavior to do it, and to get all this right, we will install in you a mindset of wisdom and leadership that will turn your life into be completely different from what you can ever think of You'll get more quality in life. You'll only get what I call bright, great experiences out of your life. And you will learn from that. And you'll never forget it. That is what I promise you. Thank you very much.